things weren't looking good. I'd become a type 2 diabetic. Yeah. And my doctor, my GP, re- almost read me my death warrant. It's not like self-denial. It's not yeah. as if oh, I'd love to have a Kit Kat, but I'm not going yeah. to. I'm yeah. being good. It was just that I just didn't want... It. I wasn't even tempted to sneak one. <laughs> So today we've got Dave Talk with us. Um, Dave is a cameraman extraordinaire who's who's been around the world from Hollywood to Bollywood and beyond. Um, but he's coming today to, to tell us something of, of his story in terms of health, where he's he's been and how he's got to where he is now. Um, Dave, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm a, I'm a director of photography. I um, I shoot movies all over the world, from mm-hmm. Hollywood to Hong Kong and beyond the Philippines, Russia, pretty much every country in Europe, um, dramas, documentaries, um, TV commercials, music videos, all sorts of things. So what, what's the sort of um, life journey that has brought you to this point in terms of health? Um, my life and my lifestyle means one, one great thing about my life and my lifestyle is that um, I'm on expenses most of the time. So I travel around the world, yeah. uh, I eat in nice restaurants and I eat uh, sometimes the wrong kind of food at someone else's expense. Right. So I go to eat someplace and somebody else pays. Um, and that's okay, it's really nice once or twice, but then year after year after year you start to pile the weight on. And uh, if you have a look at the film and pictures of me when I was. Um, you know, at my worst, I was nearly 22 stone um, and um, things weren't looking good. I'd become a type 2 diabetic and my doctor, my GP, almost read me my death warrant. He said, look, you're you're morbidly obese, your blood pressure's too high, um, your cholesterol's too high, you're type 2 diabetic, um, you know, you need to sort yourself out. Um, and he he didn't really hold back. He just said it like it was. Mm. And um, it was quite, um, I won't say shocking, because I think I probably knew anyway. But hearing it from him mm. made me think, right, what do I need to do? He said, well, the first thing you need to do is lose weight. Yeah. And from that, everything else will probably work out and pan out. So I did that. Um, that was just over, well, no, it's probably about six months ago now, but f- in five months I lost five stone. Wow. That's and I got so down, uh, thank you, so I got down to about 17 stone yeah. from 22 stone. Um, then um, about two or three weeks ago, I went to see um, the nurse as part of my six monthly checkup. I'm a type 2 diabetic. And um, my, uh, I went for my bloods because you know, the bloods are tested regularly. Um, in fact, one of the things that has really struck me is the amount of attention, humbling mm-hmm. amount of attention that I've been given by the NHS yeah. and by the local support. In a time when we've had COVID and in a time when the NHS are, have got a lot on, mm. to mm. have even dedicated any kind of time and support to little old me, is very humbling mm. and uh, and quite overwhelming. So I went to see the practice nurse, and the practice nurse said, look, uh, we've looked at your blood, you've looked at your results, we've got everything back. You're no longer a diabetic. Wow. Um, yeah. She said in 30 years of practice, she said less than 10 people have done what you've managed to achieve. Mm. Um, which I must say wasn't my achievement. I think it was the achievement of those people around me who gave me the support. Um, but it is possible. So I, 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 I'm, my journey's not over yet. I still want to lose some more weight. Yep. Um, but my blood pressure's normal. Mm-hmm. My um, cholesterol is good. My um, diabetes reading, I forget what the number e- is, but e- is, one AC. that's the one, yep. is um, is back to normal. Yep. And my uh, BMI is what you might call, is bracketed into normal okay. uh, now. Yep. 
Um, and so, yeah, that, so that, and that was a turnaround that I brought around in, a, in about six months. So just to, to, to push it back a bit, um, the, the type 2 diabetes that was diagnosed six months ago, and now it's no well. It was diabetes. It was diagnosed a lot before that. It was maybe two or three years ago. It was okay. Di- it was okay. Uh, it was diagnosed. Right. So that that was two or three years ago. You were type type two diabetic. Yeah. What what medication were you on? Metformin. Right. That uh, was the main thing. Um, I took four times fifty mils a yeah. day. I think. And was that increasing or no no uh, was that fairly steady the, the diabetes or the or the uh, the, the medication the medication um yeah it was steady um two in the morning two in the evening mm-hmm. and uh i don't even really know what it did or what the side yeah. effects were or anything like that yeah um but um, i just did what the doctor told me to now they said i don't need to take that medication mm-hmm. any longer um I've still got a packet left, which I'm going to use up, and yeah. after that, I think yeah. we're good. Okay. So, in terms of specifics, what what did you do? Um, the two things, and and, I, and initially, I think nobody wants to hear this: is diet and exercise, because mm-hmm. um, those are two horrible words. Uh, I don't like the word diet. Mm-hmm. Diet sounds really punitive. Diet sounds about it's all about self denial. It's all about misery, and it's all about punishing yourself and self flagellation. Yeah. So really, it, it it's about changing your lifestyle. Now, clearly, if you look at the pictures of me, my lifestyle wasn't great. I wasn't a happy person inside that body. Uh, there was plenty of room. It was a massive body, but it was, uh, you know, I wasn't happy there. So I think the starting point for everybody is you've got to want to change. Mm. Um, for me, the wake up call, that starting point was the doctor's message. The doctor saying, you know, if you don't do something about yourself, this is this is a, this is a crisis point. Yeah. Um, and um, also then looking at the film footage of me and just seeing myself as I really was, no uh, filters, shook me to the point of thinking, first of all, I've got to want to do something. So I think that's the starting point for everybody. Is It's not about external influences. It's not about uh, external edicts. Yeah. It's about you yourself saying, I want to change me. And from then on, everything mm-hmm. else cascades out. But it's got to begin with yourself. In in terms of attempts, so you, your weight's been going up and going up for years. Mm-hmm. Is there or have there been any history of saying, well, I'm going to, to try and lose some weight along the way? Yeah, yeah. I I, I joined Weight Watchers a few years back with, yeah. with some success. It yeah. was great. But the moment I stopped and took the brakes off, then I went back to normal. And I did the same with Slimming World. Both mm-hmm. Weight Washers and Slimming World, Slimming World worked well, mm-hmm. and uh, and I lost weight, but then I kind of just reverted back to the pictures you see in front of you. Okay. Um, if I ask you a question, how do you know this is times different? Why, why is it different this time, dear? The first... Well... Um, Three reasons. The first one is the doctor, as I say, mm-hmm. read me virtually my death warrant. Yeah. The second was that led me to really want to change. I wanted to change internally. I, I, I wanted to make this happen. And the third thing was I saw results very, very quickly. Right. Um, there's nothing worse than going through a lot of um, effort mm-hmm. and hard work and mm-hmm. then seeing no results at the end mm-hmm. of it. I started to see results very, very rapidly. I mean, on an almost daily basis. Okay. Um, I got, I know, so, um, and, and can I say, it, 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 everybody's different. So what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for somebody That's else. Right. Yeah. So um, a lot of people say, don't weigh yourself on a daily basis, do it weekly. Me, I, I weigh myself um, um, regularly um, and specifically every day. So I can gauge to within a pound or two, yesterday was bad, I need to bring it down, or yesterday was great, I lost two Mm -hmm. pounds. And Mm -hmm. so you you get immediate feedback. And immediate feedback means to immediate response and immediate modifications of your your actions. 
So instead of waiting a week and thinking, oh, no, that was a disaster, or, oh, that was great, I get that same feedback, but after every day. That might not work for everybody, but for me, I could see after two or three days, I think, hey, this is working. I've lost two or three pounds. Mm -hmm. And two or three more days, I think, hey, that's great. I've lost another two or three pounds. By the end of the first week, I'd lost, you know, half a stone. I'm thinking, this is pretty good. That kind of Mm -hmm. positive feedback that came um, rapidly is is a great incentive. Feedback loops are really important in terms of um, keeping us motivated in whatever area you want. Absolutely. I... I, um, it's it's humbling and gratifying when people say to me, um, hey, you look great. Wow, you're looking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Wow, you've lost weight. Mm-hmm. And when people say things like that to you, then, uh, you, you know, and, 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 and that leads through the whole of your life, social, mm-hmm. social life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, whether you're meeting new people yeah. you and I have never met before. Yeah. Um, when we're meeting, you know, um, it, it's undoubtedly an advantage when you're meeting people. Uh, girls or, mm-hmm. you know or, or, or um, and so on so um, there's all that kind of positive feedback is great another kind of positive feedback which is less easily, easily described is um, just going to a clothes shop and being able to put normal clothes on mm-hmm. and, 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 and jackets that will button up and yeah. so on yeah. um, haven't had that for a long time yeah, I've, I've been I've not been able to buy a shirt that fitted, or a jacket that I could button up, or or trousers that I could do up at the waist, and so suddenly to be able to go into a normal shop mm-hmm. and wear normal clothes was wonderfully liberating, and so that's the kind of feedback yeah. as well. So just just to to be clear, you're describing positive feedback. So if I ask you, was there any negative feedback? Because I'm imagining that like anything in life it's not a straight line going up in this direction um me my personality and my lifestyle is i try to avoid negativity and i try mm-hmm. to avoid negative people yeah. um if i do get negative feedback it's usually from myself uh, so i'm my own worst critic so did the scales ever give you negative feedback oh yeah yeah Right. That's kind of what got me to this place in the first place. Yeah, uh, yeah, 22 stone is pretty negative feedback. Uh, to begin with, um, I was descri- if, if people were to describe me in one word, they'd say, that fat guy over there. Mm-hmm. And so when you're defined as being the fat guy, mm-hmm. is you know that's yeah. quite negative feedback. I'd like mm-hmm. to be described as all sorts of other things. Yeah. Um, and fat wouldn't be the choice I would have... have given uh, you know it's true mm-hmm. you know they weren't lying but uh but yeah it, it feels very negative to to, to but I, I was thinking more in terms of the the feedback of, of the scales because the scales are giving you feedback you're using the scales as, as your your sounding board or am i doing okay am i going in the right direction and there surely must be points in which these scales are saying hold on no it's not quite where it should be going or you, it, it's giving you something you don't want to hear no the, uh, I mean no the, it was it was pretty much a constant okay. uh, route down yeah. so I was watching it constantly sometimes I'd consider negative feedback to be if I'd only lost one pound when I would want to be losing two or three pounds I, I saw that as mm-hmm. negative feedback okay so it was always a, a downward trend as far as uh, weight was mm-hmm. concerned um, sometimes not as rapid as I wanted, and certainly yeah. in the beginning it was very, very rapid. Now, uh, when I'm you know, six months into my journey, it's really difficult because yeah. um, the, the laugh that gets hard. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, mm. and that can be discouraging when you when you've had such great results at the yeah. beginning of the graph. Yeah. yeah. What did you change in practical terms now? Um, I changed what I ate and the way I ate and I also um, started to um, I'm reluctant to say exercise mm-hmm. because again that's a very negative word and people just their a hearts lot of, sink. Lot of, a lot of people hate that uh, um, but one of the things that the, the NHS did for me was they, they I think it's called social prescription social um, prescribing I social yeah. prescribing yeah. and um, they signed me up to go to a gym mm-hmm. And uh, so I went to the gym, uh, sat on all sorts of machines, pumped iron, hated it. 
lots of sweaty people grunting, mm -hmm. men and women, yeah. all listening to iPods and uh, running and looking at graphs. Oh, it was terrible. But at the at the gym, there was also a swimming pool, and uh, that's where I went. Um, when I was as heavy as I was, exercise was very difficult because it's such an impact on your knees. Mm -hmm. So so running, jogging, things like that. But swimming, ideal was was swimming. However, was ideal. Mm -hmm. um, a twenty five meter pool. So I used to swim forty lengths, which is one kilometer. Mm -hmm. So I swim I swim forty uh, lengths every day, and loved it. And part of the reason I loved it was it's incredibly therapeutic. For the one time of the day, I didn't have earphones. I didn't have a mobile phone. I wasn't looking at social media. I wasn't answering emails. I've yet to discover a means whereby I could answer emails and look at social media whilst I'm swimming. Right. Yeah. So there's this yeah. wonderful, almost digital exclusion. Yeah. So yeah. not only is it good physically a cardiovascular and, and just just some exercise mm -hmm. i found it great spiritually as well just to, mm -hmm. to have this digital detox and just get away from it all then i found i was making friends because the people in the pool were the same people yeah. i see every day, yeah. every day every day and it became quite a a, a social thing right. as well um, and so I actually look forward to swimming. I'm going this evening. I always go exactly the same time of day. I go from eight o'clock till nine o'clock in an evening. So I build my evening around um, that. Yeah. Meet the same people all the time. The same people in the gym, and even the people in the gym are saying, "Wow, you're looking great. You're looking good now. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going well." And uh, they were about the first people I shared the news with, saying, "I'm not a diabetic anymore." Yeah. And it's thanks to you guys, and thanks to your help and your support and your encouragement. When, when you say the people in the gym, are we talking about the, the people who work in the gym or the people who are participating? In, in... Mainly the people who work in the gym. I found the people who work there very positive. Uh, yeah. The the pool attendants yeah. uh, and so on. But yeah, there's people I've met mm -hmm. uh, in the pool as well who um, you know, I see on a daily basis now and wanted to share some positive news with. Yeah. And, um, and, and uh, it is wonderful when you can say something like that. It is positive mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and, and enforcing. So that, that's really important in terms of um, the psychology of motivation. When we talk about motivation and what keeps you moving in terms of change, one of the big drivers is community. And so, yes, it's, it's some of it's built in, in into Weight Watchers and some of it's built into um, the, the other types. Slimming World. Slimming World. Yeah, yeah. All of these have an element of, of community. Yeah, yeah. But so somewhere along the line, you discover a, a love of swimming. And that is like, wow, well, you, you're getting the, the dopamine hits along the way. And you're getting the, the positive feedback, taps on the back, say, well done, you're doing well, Dave, that's amazing, all of these things, I think, are, are key to any sort of, of health journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, we all live within a community, unless you're a hermit living mm -hmm. on a desert island. Everybody's in some sort of community, not necessarily Weight Watchers or Slimming World community, but we're all in a community. Yeah. And we're all surrounded by people who... <sighs> Rightly or wrongly, will judge us by our appearance. Mm. Um, usually, that's the very first um, feedback anybody ever gets because that's the first thing they see. Yeah. Um, it's not about how clever you are. It's not about your stunning personality, your wit, your humour. It's about your appearance. Um, and we live in a community where we are judged, as I say, rightly or wrongly, first and foremost by our appearance. Yeah. Um, now, that's sad news when you're as fat as I was. Mm. Um, but better news now. So, yeah, we're, we're always getting feedback all the time from people around us, not necessarily part of our Weight Watchers group, but from our swimming pool or the people, you know, in the queue for the supermarket or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, there'll, there'll be some kind of feedback. So the other, the other piece to this, which uh, I wanted to highlight, was habit formation. So... You've now saying to me, you've built your part of your world, part of your daily routine, part of your schedule around your swimming. And that happens regularly? Every day. I Every do. day. Yeah. Seven days a week? 
Five except, days a week? I take week, weekends off. No, so okay. Five days a week. Five days a week, which is pretty good. And I think that, that it allows for the recovery phase as well. Um, and I think that for, for anybody watching, you think, well, a lot of times we try and do things on willpower. And it, it doesn't work. No, no. Um, well, the willpower is, is, the way I look at it is, um, well, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to use the word diet because mm -hmm. diet, as I said before, yeah. is quite a punitive word. So it's, it's more about changing your, your lifestyle. I tell people, uh, if they ask, because I'm not a preacher, really, but um, I eat what I want, yeah. I eat it whenever I want, and I eat as much as I want. Yeah. The trick is, it's about what I want. I've changed what I want. I don't want to eat as often as I wanted to in the olden days. Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat the kind of foods that were bad for me in the olden days. So there's nothing punitive. There's nothing saying, oh, I would really, really like to have that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be good because that's just punitive mm -hmm. self-denial. It's misery and um, it's painful and you can't keep it up because it's about willpower. Yeah. So it's about changing really what you actually want. And and I found that, um, you know, it, 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 it was... Not necessarily painful, but it was it was probably a little bit awkward at first. Yeah. But within, I'd say, a week, a week, okay. you can change your lifestyle around. So you think, you know what, I don't want that extra bit. You know what, it's I know it's lunchtime, but I'm not that hungry. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll get through till till dinner this evening. Mm -hmm. And so we 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 um, we live lives which are already habit formed. Yeah. I'm not sure that it's necessary for us to eat three or four meals a day at breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, supper time, mm -hmm. or whatever. That's something that's only been implemented over the last uh, 100 or 200 years or so. I think at the start right. of the Industrial yeah. Revolution and yeah. mechanisation and, and factories and things. Suddenly we decided to sit down and we'd have breakfast before the factory whistle went. And then we'd have lunch time because the factory had shut down for lunch. And then we'd have dinner in the evening after the factory closed. So it's only fairly recently that we've been mm -hmm. regimented into having meals because the factory whistle says so. In reality, we should listen probably more to, I don't know whether the voice comes from our, our head or our stomach or whether it's a combination of two. Probably both. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and say, you know what, well, um, I know it's lunchtime, but I'm not hungry. Mm. I don't need it. I'm only eating because societal pressures say we eat at this time. It's not necessary. So listening, I think, to your, your body. Yeah. Uh, is great and the, the body voices then become louder um, and you can change those habits so eating is no longer a punitive diet mm -hmm. it's actually mm -hmm. just a yeah. different kind of yeah. lifestyle yeah. That, that that's key as well I, I believe to a lot of um, change is the first thing is the awareness so the, you're getting an awareness of oh, not not I'm aware of this, but I'm aware of this. And this piece has greater impact than this. But traditionally, we're looking at this. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, are, there are a lot of societal pressures, um, you know, whether it's um, social drinking mm -hmm. or, as it was in my case, social eating. Mm -hmm. You know, people would go out for a meal, I would be expected, well, I, I would willingly go with yeah, them. Yeah. Um, to you know, to go to a nice restaurant, eat a nice meal. Somebody else would pay the bill. Why wouldn't you go? So there's lots of societal pressures on us all. Even at lunch times, when everybody else is, gets their lunch out, even when yeah. it's just in the office, yeah. and you don't, or it, yeah. people say, "Oh, is that all you're having? Uh, you know, yeah. what are you eating that for?" Yeah. And so there's there's constantly pressures around us, um, which we can choose to submit to, or we can, as you say, look at our own selves and the rewards that we're going to give ourselves which is you know uh well i'm going to be fitter not fatter yeah. and i'm going to lose this weight and i'm yeah. probably going to add years onto my life yeah. not just adding years to my life but just adding something to the quality of my life yes and, and my lifestyle foundational for sure just, just let me interrupt you there Dave. um so when i talk to people about what you're doing and you're changing and say what well, if I look at your environment, because to me the environment plays a huge part of, you know, we were already talking about the clock as part of the environment, but we started by describing your work environment. And so you're, you're in this place where 
One minute you're in Timbuktu, next minute you're in Hollywood, next minute you're in Borneo, next minute you're in the Philippines. And all of these things are changing. And they're all different um, food um, sensations around you. How are you managing that aspect of your life? There's one really flippant answer to that, yeah. um, which you might want to edit out. <laughs> but it doesn't matter wherever I go in the world, it's always become like um, um, almost a ceremonial is I'll go to McDonald's. Right. Because I'm just fascinated that I can go to a McDonald's in the Philippines yeah. and a McDonald's in Los Angeles yeah. and they can be thousands of miles apart. Or oh, McDonald's in Russia. Yes. What's yeah. that all about? And it's always the same. So there is that kind of fascination. Yeah. But yes, um, but I don't make a habit of it. You know, yeah. I've seen Morgan Spurlock's documentary and yeah, yeah. it's bad news. So um, and I, that's just almost a, um, just a so that, quirky little well, thing. That, that, if you want, you can call it an anchor point. It's a datum, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the weirdest thing I've ever eaten is jellyfish. Right. Uh, not squid. Octopus and jellyfish. That was the weirdest thing I've eaten. Um, uh, quite a delicacy, I'm told. And uh, but yeah, traveling around the world, I have eaten bizarre but things in bizarre places. Yeah. What I'm trying to 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 push you on, Dave, is is the fact that you you're now going into a different environment, and how does that different food environment? impact your wants or your needs or your desires how how is that have you in the last six months okay in the last six months have you been in different environments or have you been always at home no different environments uh, the first thing i say is i think what's most important is um uh, politeness mm -hmm. uh, that if a guest invites you for a dinner somewhere yeah um in whatever country and whatever culture that um, it, you're beholden to be just polite yeah. and uh, if they're being hospitable and then I would not say oh I'm not eating that mm -hmm. you do you know but my eating regime but if somebody's kind enough to place a plate of food in front of me then I would um, first of all I would be, feel honour bound but it would also be an honour to eat that meal that's been prepared for me mm -hmm. so I don't try to get all um, you know highfalutin and, and get on my high horse and say oh I can't eat that because, because. of this or that or this or that um, meal times are um, a very important part of most societies mm -hmm. not simply a means of loading energy in through the mouth mm -hmm. but actually they are time for um, um, uh, hospitality and fellowship yeah. and communion yeah. and it's quite important both in the British culture but also in cultures around the world mm. that you don't upset that and so if if something is placed in front of me like jellyfish not my favorite food yeah but jellyfish then somebody's uh, somebody's so, somebody's of effort. they've honored me yeah. with that food I will reciprocate by uh, eating it would you eat all of it? I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is, that, in, in that always, is that always the case then? So if, if um, you you and I have never met before and I, I turn around and say, Here, here's a six course meal I prepared for you, Dave. Um, yes, because I'd be honoured and flattered because of that. But, but surely you I'm counting on the fact that maybe I'm not going to have another six course meal that week. Okay. And maybe, so it's not. The thing is, it's taken me 30, 40 years to get as fat as I was. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to take me 30 or 40 minutes to put it all back on again. Correct. You know, yes. there might okay. be a, a little lapse and I might put a few pounds on. I've just come back from. Uh, Amsterdam, mm -hmm. where we were, we were, I was over in Amsterdam, and um, we let the, I, I let the boundaries slack mm -hmm. a little bit, and I put a bit of weight on. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Mm -hmm. I just get back on and start again. So it's is that I wanted to try and pick a little bit. So it's like you you loosening the reins and the horse for a little while, and somewhere along the lines, there's a compensation that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Now just get back on and, and start, yeah, and, and, and 
take a boy you like because no. well no today i've given you a six course meal date are you saying to me that that in the next week something else has to happen to compensate if you want or get back on the horse etc whatever it is that keeps you moving in a particular direction first of all the six course meal was great yeah. and the enjoyment i got from the six course meal the fellowship the communion yeah. the that's really really important as well yeah. life isn't all about food yeah the second thing is that yeah it, it's i've eaten the food it's not going to take me back up to 22 stones so mm -hmm. i'm not going to worry about that mm -hmm. i'll probably put a few pounds on but i'll get back on the horse as you say mm -hmm. and we'll continue the journey and within a week as it did, I, I, I put on a few pounds when I went to um, to Amsterdam last week, but I, I can see the weight dropping off again. And okay, so it's basically, it means I've kind of lost a week, but at the end of the week, I'm kind of back to where I was at the beginning. So and then we can continue the downward journey, uh, the, the, the downward the trend, uh, weight loss yeah. trend, the downward trend uh, from, from then on in. It's just not beating myself up, not punishing myself as a consequence. Um, enjoying the moments as they come and yeah. you know and realizing that whatever the consequences we can pick up from that and start again okay. you know my starting point was 22 stone if my starting point this week after getting back from Amsterdam is 17 stone mm -hmm. then pff, I'm, I'm doing all right it's a good starting yeah, point. yeah yeah I'm, I'm really pressing on you on this one because it's let's say you're in Amsterdam and Johnson is giving you a six course meal six days a week are you eating that six days a week by the end of the second day i probably know i feel i knew you well enough to be able to say johnson can we can, can we kind can of we do do four or three yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Can we just, yeah. Oh, can we... maybe maybe we don't need a six course meal this yeah. this often so um if i was meeting with a, a complete stranger who'd opened their house and their hospitality to me then i feel duty bound mm -hmm. um to to accept that hospitality yeah. it's a, it's an honor yeah but if you and I were there for six days and of, of that entire week we were having a six course meal every week, I'd have to say, whoa, 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 I can't eat another thing. You know, yesterday we stuffed, can we just like okay. chill today? So, um, and just as I, you'd feel positive about that feedback as well because yeah. you'd probably be stuffed too. And I can imagine there's probably financial repercussions. <laughs> so, so everybody benefits. Yeah. And, and, and so it's about honor and honesty. I think um, in the film business, food is just laid on, and it's not often the best food. Mm. Uh, basically, it's any kind of chocolate you can imagine, plus lots of fizzy drinks. That's mainly through the day. Tables and tables of, of food. Um, and it's about just restrict, and it's free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you see a pile of Kit Kats and you can have one, and it's free you're yeah. gonna and, and actually you can have six because nobody's counting it doesn't really matter you, you've got to be your own policeman really in that respect well i think one thing that actually struck me was because uh, we do a, a lot of um what i would call oh well all all nighters yeah so we're working like a 24-hour shift yeah so you're shooting in difficult weather conditions difficult lighting mm -hmm. conditions and filming right through the night so you're starting work probably about 10 o'clock at night and you're finishing at about six o'clock in the morning and i was concerned when i started this new regime I'm not going to say diet but this mm -hmm. new regime this yeah. new lifestyle yeah. how i was going to cope i'm usually the oldest person on the set yeah so i'm 63 lots of young people teens and 20s around me how i would going to cope in an environment where we're working right through the night uh, and I was concerned because I thought am I going to like fizzle out at like one o'clock in the morning and I was really pleasantly surprised and relieved to find that yeah I kept on going and actually a lot of the young people around me were flagging but actually um, I was going right through and getting through until five and six o'clock in the morning without really any and i had done this before um it's, it's part of life but now i changed my lifestyle and with diff different eating habits was i going to be able to keep that up and i think it was actually even easier now right. and um and i could see people around me who were struggling 
under mm. those circumstances. And yet, me, the oldest guy on set, I was still going. And that was uh, quite well, a revelation to me. So you do, you're pulling this all night and there's a table with, with unlimited Kit Kats and fizzy drinks. Are yeah, you part of it? No, no. Green tea. Uh, okay. That's my that's my thing. Uh, I love green tea. Mm -hmm. uh, fizzy drinks are okay. Um, I'm, I'm not teetotal. Yeah. Uh, you know, on a baking hot day with the sun streaming down, I would love a, a, a lager, but just mm -hmm. one. Thirst quenching is great. Fizzy drinks, good. I'm okay with that. Although there are so many sugar-free fizzy drinks now, I think mm. uh, Fanta and Sprite yeah, and Stevno, yeah, yeah. or even Coke, do zero sugar versions. So drink those. Um, but my drink of choice would be a green tea. Okay. Um, and just just to, to pull it back again, uh, to, to, to zone in on, on that tray, that table with unlimited... Um, sugary stuff. Are, are you saying, well, I'm not tempted at all, or...? Um, no, no, not tempted at all. It's like I'd flicked a switch in my okay. head, and that was it. Um, I can't think. Occasionally I might have a piece of chocolate, somebody might offer me a piece, you know, so it's not like a religious, like, abstinence. Yeah. Um, but no, 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 so as I say, Free chocolate, stacks mm -hmm. of Kit mm -hmm. Kats and Mars bars on tables, creaking under the weight, and you just help yourself. No, not tempted so what, at what, all. What were you doing in terms of of your um, eating pattern before you'd go on these night um, escapades? Um, eating probably one of the reasons i became a diabetic was just eating lots and lots of energy giving in other words calorie laden mm -hmm. chocolate bars yeah. what's easier that i need some energy so what's better than i'll just eat some chocolate there's a free kit kat oh yeah. there's six free kit kats i'll put some in my pocket for later so they, you know yeah. a kit kat every 15 minutes and just um chocolate and drinks just energy 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 all the time because i thought that's what i needed i think it's the wrong kind of energy because i was just having sugar and uh, I think that's what led to me becoming a type 2 diabetic. But you changed this so that the new day is, is not doing that before going on to a night. No, no, a night no. Pattern. As I said, it's like I just clicked a switch and said, you're diabetic, don't eat chocolate anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't eat sweets and sugary things anymore. Um, and I don't. And it's like I just didn't want... Mm. It's not like self-denial. It's not like, oh, I'd love to have a Kit Kat, but I'm not going yeah. to. I'm yeah. being good. It was just that I just didn't want... It. I wasn't even tempted to sneak one. Um, and yeah. uh, 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 so, and I, I can't account for what's flipped that switch in my head other than the fact that I realised and recognised that mm. I needed to change and it was down to me to... Because only I can flip that switch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. The doctor, the physician can't. Um, the, 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 the undertaker might be able to flick the switch yeah. by then it would be too late and I didn't want to wait that long I, I know the, one of the, the key things that um, um, the research is pointing to is, is the free sugars I and mean, the free sugars that people take or the simple sugars versus the complex carbs is that buzz it gives you that, that Kit Kat will spike your blood sugar up and then it'll crash. And usually the, the crash goes run out of energy. Yeah, yeah. And then you reach into your pocket for Kit Kat part two. Uh, that, that literally, uh, I'm, it's, it seems strange that you are describing my life despite the fact that we've never met before. But yeah, I was doing that. I was falling asleep on set. Mm. Um, and it was because I'd had so many sugar spikes in a desperate attempt to get energy, not realizing that the spikes are what were causing this lack of energy. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, which was why I was concerned when I went on my first all-nighter um, after changing my regime. How am I going to manage? And it was a, it was a really really arduous. It, it was at night on the coast. We were up to our waist in water. It was a night time, so electricity, sea water, cameras, w yeah. huge waves crashing down. It was not an easy environment. Uh, and yet, yeah, got through it. And that was a real, uh, that, we'll talk about feedback. feedback. That was real positive feedback. Yeah. So I just thought, well, this is obviously working. 
Yeah. Uh, and that had been my biggest concern because. Uh, and have you repeated that? Yeah, experience? yeah. So, so several times since then. Okay. Uh, I've been on all nighters and now thought, yeah, we're good, we're good. Certainly, and I know from experience of doing night shifts, and there are people who you just have to do night shifts, don't you? Whether you're, you're a truck driver, you're working in, in the medical, or you're, you're stacking shelves in a supermarket, people do night shifts. Um, and the, the, the studies have shown that, that one night shift is not good for your health, but primarily when you're starting to eat and you're getting these, these spikes, and because basically we're not meant to, we're not designed to, to be up all night, because your, your brain is saying, I need to go to sleep, the, the melatonin rises and it switches off your pancreas. So, or anything you, you eat, after your, your pancreas is switched off and the insulin is, is switched off, all of that sugar is is only a little bit goes up here to give you the spike, but most of it's laid down in fat. Mm. Um, and so I guess for you, some things change mentally, but you must have been, are you, have you been eating more fruit and veg along the way? Are you eating more? Uh, Something has to change. Yeah, to eating a lot more vegetables, right. um, no fruit. Okay. I've really been avoiding fruit because I was warned off it because oh, most that. fruits yeah. have just um, little bags of sugar, really, fructose and glucose in them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some fruits, berries are great, so I think strawberries, blackberries, mm -hmm. blueberries, raspberries, um, anything that ends with the word berry, I think, <laughs> is a good thing. Um, so I eat a lot of things like that. Uh, Greek yogurt, yeah. which uh, is uh, Greek, and, and it's, that's kind of... Yeah. And a nice yeah. treat for me is that. Greek yogurt and berries is lovely. Um, avoiding all the kind of fruit salads um, mm -hmm. and things that we always perceive to be healthy, yeah. but in fact carry a lot of what I understand. I'm not a nutritionist, mm -hmm. uh, but what I understand to be the kind of sugars that uh, aren't necessarily good for us. Um, so I avoid those and eat berries and things like that. So we've, we've, we've talked about the, the weight aspect of health. But what, tell me a little bit about the feeling aspect. Well, um, and part, one of the reasons I came across today, uh, 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 your invitation, was um, because I feel positive about what I've done. Yeah. And um, uh, Do you feel more energised? Do you feel more positive? Are your moods changed in any form? Or yeah, fashion? yeah, very much so. Um, I, uh, psychologically, physically, um, dare I say sexually. Even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um uh you know uh, uh my libido is good uh, mm -hmm. uh and also just like being around um um people yeah. i feel more confident now when walking into a room uh I, i've just come back from Cannes, from the Cannes film festival mm -hmm. that's a place where you need a lot of confidence and um uh, you know it's about style yeah. and so being able to pull that off was something that i probably couldn't have done when i was when well, you've seen the pictures, you yeah. know, wouldn't have been as easy. Now I could confidently walk into a room and uh, own it. But it, this is one of the key things about when we talk about health, isn't it? It's not simply um, the number on the scales. It, it's the moods changing. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, our whole body, it's a holistic thing. And it's, it's, it's about our spirituality, our mentality uh, and our physicality as well. Um, yes, yeah, sure. You can stand on scales and you can get an immediate readout in numerically of, of, of the physical effect it's having you. It's more difficult to measure the emotional and and uh, mental issues. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, they're there. And yeah, it, it is about feeling a lot more positive about oneself. I think we live in a society now where the thing that we lack more than anything, most people lack more than anything, is confidence. Yeah. People have so little self-confidence. Losing weight, which seems almost quite selfish, I mean, it, you can't get more selfish than that because it is about me, myself, but it has lots of knock-on effects and lots of outward social repercussions. Um, but those are beneficial because suddenly it's lovely being around people. It's mm. lovely meeting people for the first time. It's lovely going into a clothes shop mm. and being uh, outfitted and 
the, the, the shop assistant doesn't roll their eyes when you walk through the door because they think, oh no, what are we going to do here? Mm. You know, so it's actually, things become pleasurable. I can remember once going on a, um, an aerial uh, adventure thing with my uh, children and being told I couldn't, this was years ago, when I was heavily overweight, and told I couldn't do it because I was too heavy and uh, mm. to go on the, the overhead cables. Mm. Um, now I can do that. And so all sorts of adventures await me. All sorts of avenues open up. Absolutely, absolutely. So oh. life's, my, life is much fuller and richer than the blokes, the 22, year, mm. 22 stone bloke sitting in a corner just lamenting the fact that life was passing him mm. by and I was too big to do anything. I, I can see the, the, the um, community benefits in terms of when when you are radiating self esteem, when your identity is, is shifted, that dare I say it, you you you're nicer to be around. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I like to think I was always nice to be around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And, that's okay, r- radiating self esteem makes it sound like I'm some sort of pompous, arrogant person. No, no, no. I, 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 um, but, I'm but, not in those terms. But at all. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice to be around positive people. I like that, and I like to be positive myself. And it's very hard to be positive when you're. 22 stone and yeah. you know so me myself haven't changed my my, my um, intellect my sense of humor things like that haven't changed but yeah my outlook on life and the people around me and more importantly those people's outlook uh, an attitude toward me yes. has changed uh, for, for, for the better I think and uh, so life's nicer now Dave, Dave moving forward what what is your your health goal? Where where do you want to go next? Um, more of the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just like uh, I, I'm not at my target weight yet. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think my BMI is kind of within normal mm-hmm. range now. It's but um, there's the, there's there's room to go. Um, uh, so yeah, I want to continue that. I love swimming. Yeah, uh, I'll continue with that. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's um, it's. I don't think that anything that I'm doing is, is is punitive. Nothing that I'm doing is is punishing me or making me feel pain or making me feel self denial. It's it's great, and the results are positive. So why wouldn't I? Yeah, the results and positive uh, and uh, and outcomes are positive, and it's not like I feel like I'm forfeiting anything mm-hmm. to get that positive gain. So. It's a bit of a no-brainer, really. Yeah. Why wouldn't I keep doing this? Yeah. So when when you describe your your health journey, um, and maybe not everybody w- would get an um, exponential drop in in weight, but you know everyone is different in that respect. Um, but certainly to move forward, do you have any other strategies in mind, or are you continuing to do the same as you have done? At the moment, I'm doing the same as I have done. I am toying with the idea of going into the gym now with mm-hmm. the grunting, sweaty people. <laughs> You're going to join the dark side. Well, it's, I'm already a member, yeah. um, so, well, but, but I, I, I just go to the pool. Yeah. Um, so now I'm thinking, well, there's bits of me now that I do want to like tone up and yeah. like I want to get yeah. like a six pack and things like that. And so yeah. yeah. So maybe I should go into. The, but the gym was a very awkward and pleasant place to be mm. when I was the, the, the shape and size that I was. Mm. Now, I think, you know, I could give most of them a run for their money. Yeah. And so it might be a better place to be. So, yeah, I might go back to the gym and... Uh, if I can offer you some advice then. Go for it. Swimming is, is an amazing um, way of um, getting fit. Because you're not, like say, you're not stressing the knees out, you're not stressing the joints out. There's a lot of cardio benefits. Um, I don't know if you ever tried doing hits while swimming. I don't know that. So a hit is a high intensity interval training regime. Basically, people talk about it, usually in terms of either running or cycling or rowing, where you say, right, well, I'm going to run 30 seconds as hard as I can down there to the point where I feel like I'm going to drop dead because I can't talk. Um, and it's not very pleasant. And then I'm going to stop, 
and I'm going to repeat it four times, so something like 15 minutes of, of doing that sort of regime, which has the benefit of, of increasing your metabolism, increasing your heart rate, and all those good stuff. It is possible to do it in a swimming pool. Uh, yeah, I suppose I do do it from time to time. Um, where, where you think, yeah. right, well, at 25 metres, I'm going to hammer it. Yeah, I'm there's gonna... a big clock at the end with yeah. this second hand going around in it. Yeah, I do go with that sometimes, where I actually race it. And so um, the goal goal is not yeah. necessarily the time, but it's or the distance. The goal is the feeling. Yeah, uh, the, where the, the exhaustion, if you the will. The exhaustion, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. Do it anymore, yeah, yeah. and then to repeat it at least yeah, four yeah. to five times in a session. Yeah, yeah. That is is that something you've tried? Yes, um, not four or five times. I've done it. I didn't realize it was called hit training, but, yeah. but yes, I will. Um, I'll do that. That that's what they uh, won't have a clue what's going on down at the pool. They just no, like, no, no. Why is he suddenly <laughs> racing off? And then like, he, like then Aquaman. He, then he stopped. <laughs> Aquaman is standing at the edge of the pool like he's about to drown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, then I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll make that an undertaking. I'm going to the pool this evening. Yeah. So, um... yeah I, I just in terms of um, building motivation for me, one of the things is is understanding why I'm doing something. So. I, when I'd started going to the gym, I, I had the dark side and the light side. The light side is I'm going to tread now, I'll do the, the um, rowing machine, I'll do, um, you know, some of these, maybe the bike. It was a recumbent bike, which is probably thinking, oh yeah, that's the best thing because it doesn't hurt your knees and doesn't hurt your back. The downsides to the recumbent bike, and then I moved on to the, the ordinary kind of you know, the sit up straight kind of bike. Yeah. But I'd always avoid the other side because that's the side with the mirrors. And that's the side with, with, with people who are under a certain age. And then what I, what I realized after is doing the re research on why it is you want to maintain or build muscle. Because like it or not, from the time you hit 35, 2% of your muscle mass decreases every 10 years. The, the benefit of, of building muscle mass in terms of fitness and in terms of diabetics, for instance, is that the muscle acts as a sink for glucose. When you are, the more muscle you have, if, if you had a muscle that's that big, and then you eat an ice cream, and you exercise, the, the muscle is sucking in the, um, the glucose. So it's not that I can go to the gym and say, right, I, I, I'm not interested in a six pack or, or how, you know, 40 inch biceps or anything. But, but building and maintaining muscle mass is, is key for, I think, one of the next steps that you may want to consider. Right. So, right. so see, I've learned something. And, and, and that fits in with what I want to do. So yeah. I'd like to get more muscular. Um, and um, and I think that, an excuse? Yeah. Well, it's an excuse, but it's also, I think, it's important for motivation. Because certainly when I go to the gym now, and I'm using the, the, the resistance um, at, um, machines, there's still the 35-year-old guy who's looking like this next to me. So... The danger of doing these things is that there's always somebody better, prettier, stronger, faster, younger, all the rest of that. And so for me to maintain that mental mindset of saying, mm. I know why I'm doing this, and it's not to compare me to you. And so that keeps me on that straight and narrow of, if I know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, then I'm doing it with intentionality. You know, my intention, my goal is this, and I'm ignoring and putting like blinkers on to, you can look anywhere the way you want to look, but because I know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, it gives me that mental fortitude to yeah. keep doing it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what people need, that mental fortitude is the thing that so many people lack, and that's often why people come stumbling down. Um, I think the most important element of 
whatever we do and whatever journey we want is to have some sort of hope. Yeah. And I think um, before I started this and when I was the shape and the size of the pictures mm -hmm. you've seen, I, I was hopeless. I was without hope. Yeah. Um, the doctor challenged me. It wasn't like he was giving me hope. He was really giving me um, a, an ultimatum, I think, yeah. really, more than anything else. But the hope soon followed. And when I saw the positive results, then I felt there is mm. opportunity. I'm 63. Yeah. You can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. You can change your life. You can change your lifestyle. You can change your body shape. Yeah. And and everything that oh, the repercussions we just talked about, all the things that the spin-offs from that i think that hope that positivity is kind of what keeps you going mm. forward there's nothing worse than being hopeless yeah. with, being without any hope but to be told that you know life isn't over when you get to 50 mm -hmm. or 60 or 70 or 80 you know mm -hmm. there's there's opportunities there and there is hope there Provided we apply ourselves, yeah. and and you know, um, seventy is my next big birthday, and I hope to be still doing this at seventy, and not yeah. thinking uh, s at seventy I'm past it. Yeah. Some people think that at, at forty, but it's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's a, a, a it's frame of it's a frame of mind. Yeah. Uh, don't give into it. But there is hope. There is opportunity. There is potential, and there is a future. Dave, it's been a pleasure talking with you.